here we are, chapter 38, talking about the origins of the Cold War. We'll uh, get right into it here. So really the background is we're talking about what happened following World War II, and we're really going to focus in on um, the relationship that kind of went sour uh, between the United States and the Soviet Union. So the question is, what visions did each country have for post-war Europe? Uh, basically, Joseph Stalin, he wanted to create a buffer zone of friendly communist states to protect the USSR. And the reasons why we talked about um, how Germany used Poland as kind of their entryway to invade uh, Russia during World War II, and uh, Stalin wanted to protect himself from that happening again, so he wanted a whole bunch of these friendly communist states to kind of be between he, him and uh, other European states that might uh, attempt to invade again. And then we've got the United States. Really, he wanted to allow Eastern European nations to determine their own form of government, that idea of self-determination that was brought up by Woodrow Wilson um, and his 14 points uh, after World War I. Um, Truman honestly believed that those Euro if they were allowed to choose for themselves that Eastern European countries would choose democracy versus communism. So we want to take a look at the experiences of each country from World War I, and that will give us some insight into the perspective that each country had. Um, here we have Russia on the left. They lost 20 million citizens plus the 7 million soldiers they lost. Um, huge amount of destruction. Uh, the Nazis, they leveled many Russian cities. Uh, basically, a, a good portion of Russia was in rubble. And then we take a look at the U.S. experience. They've got 290,000 soldiers that died, um, which is a lot. But comparatively, when you see the difference between the two, it's not near as um, costly as it was for uh, the USSR. Um, there was no fighting that took place on U.S. soil, and really during the war the US economy was was really doing great and um, so really the experiences were a lot different which will you know allows for that insight into the perspective of each country and their hopes for post-war Europe um, so then we want to talk about the ideologies and how those shape each country um, here on the left again we've got the Soviet Union and the thing we're talking about here is communism and we'll talk about it in terms of um, the political implications communism uh -huh. Um, really, thank you for that. Communism is um, where one party really uh, controls all the politics, and it really usually goes up to, in this case, one person, and that was Joseph Stalin. Um, in terms of the United States, we have a democratic government where the people choose who's in charge, and that can change, you know, every few years with the elections. Um, and then we've got. Uh, things based on the economy. We've got government control of the economy. The state owns and runs businesses um, and decides what should be produced. So uh, the government is in charge of all the businesses and, and um, determining what is going to pre be produced, reducing the amount of competition and therefore the quality of any of its products. Uh, then we've got a capitalist economy um, and that's where we see business owners are deciding what to produce. Um, businesses are privately owned and then the consumers decide what to buy so that idea of supply and demand really comes into effect here uh, when we're talking about capitalism. Uh, so then we talk about you know section three adjusting to the post-war world. How did the superpowers view each other in 1946? Really the Soviet Union um, they had such a different idea about the way things should look um, that they believed peace was impossible as long as capitalism existed. Uh, the United States described um, the Soviets as being fanatically committed to the belief that the U.S. system and uh, their way of life must be destroyed. So these are some of the challenges that we face. So really they're not getting along very well. And why, why was the possibility of superpower conflict a frightening one? Um, talking about two very powerful countries, the threat of nuclear um, attack really compelled our countries to um, show restraint in the use of force. So it, it is frightening when you think about what could happen. So then we see the responses here. Um, so the question is, what did the United States propose to control nuclear weapons? Um, they talked to the UN to develop um, 
kind of a ban on the development and use of atomic energy uh, and then ban making any future bombs. Um, but, of course, the U U.S. can keep a small stockpile of nuclear weapons. So we have it, but nobody else does. Um, and then, <coughs> how does the U.S. respond to this plan? The Soviet Union um, said that talks could continue once the U.S. destroyed all of its atomic weapons and would not give up its veto power in um, the Security Council, which is part of the U.N. So really, if they didn't um, you know, agree to this, it wasn't going to happen. And they just said, why, why have a double standard? Why doesn't the U.S. destroy all of its atomic weapons? That only makes the most sense to us. So there you have um, adjusting to the post-war world, Section 3. Then we get on to Section 4, confronting the communist threat. The challenge here on the left, we're looking at what was the Soviet Union doing in Eastern Europe. Um, and basically, Stalin was setting up Soviet-controlled government so he could bring his military in and, again, uh, have that buffer zone of protection. And then the second one here, it says, why would the U.S. be concerned about the situation in Greece? Communism, if they control this area known as the Dardanelles, um, that was this huge shipping lane that would threaten the Suez Canal. So we can't have you know, uh, a Soviet-controlled area in Greece because of these um, choke points uh, uh, on the globe in terms of shipping. Um, then over here we see the response. How did the U.S. respond to communist threats in these areas? Uh, this is where we see the Truman Doctrine coming into play. They started this policy where they would aid these countries that were trying to fight against communism. So they really wanted to stop the spread of communism. And this is really where um, the beginning of containment uh, starts. Um, So we want to think about um, some allies here for the Soviets and the United States. Um, as hostile powers committed to destroying communism and threatening security. So that's really how, how they viewed these things. Um, and they saw this as a way for the U.S. to maintain a monopoly on nuclear weapons. So they saw this again as a threat. And the U.S. is trying to get control versus uh, the Soviets trying to get control. And because the U.S., they believed, wanted to have this monopoly on nuclear weapons so that they could continue um, to kind of call the shots in terms of um, what they could do about a certain situation. And then we've got <coughs> a couple of questions we need to think about here. What were the conditions of Europe after the war? Talking about rebuilding these economies. What fears did the U.S. have about these uh, conditions? Um, Remember, Europe was, you know, they got the brunt of the situation in World War II. And uh, one of the things that come into play is um, the Marshall Plan. Okay, so we'll talk about that here in just a second. And then what did the um, U.S. fear about these conditions? Um, you know, they thought that the Soviets were going to take control. So then we go to the response, what plan did the U.S. have for European recovery? That's when we get the Marshall Plan. So really this is going towards um, Western European countries where the U.S. would aid in the recovery, uh, you know, by giving supplies, money, things like that. And then, of course, the USS, our response to this plan is what's known as the Molotov Plan, and that's where we see... Um, the Soviet Union doing their best to give economic aid to Eastern European countries, the ones that were falling under the influence of communism. So we have these two opposing ideas here. The words we need to remember are the Molotov Plan and um, the Marshall Plan. And there you have it. All right. Thanks for listening. Hope this helps. Questions if you have them. Have a good day.